Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and I'm very excited to show you today uh, this uh, ephemera storage or digital image storage idea. You can use it for either, it doesn't matter, bits and bops or uh, fussy cut out uh, digital kit pieces um, to help you keep things organized plus Hi Holly, that's my African gray parrot, and um, Sunny is sleeping, and that's my dog, and um, using common items uh, or things you might have around the house or maybe some oddball things that didn't quite work with other junk journal projects, and um, some goofy things you may not have thought of. Okay, so I'm doing a big far away view here, and um, Holly apparently is going to have a lot to say. <laughs> okay, uh, so let me just give you a quick tour. Basically, this is an old book cover that I removed the spine, and I, I love this book cover. I really wanted to uh, use it for something wonderful, and I didn't know what it was, but I'll give you its dimensions too so you have an idea. Um, it's just very naturally aged, and I just, I love that. And, um, okay, so let me zoom out again. Its actual dimensions um, are, da 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 da, uh, just like eight and seven eighths, just a little over eight and a half wide by 12 tall. And that just happened to work uh, pretty much perfectly here for this project. Um, and what I used was the old book cover and these old photo album uh, things and I just picked some up at my local thrift store and they were 50 cents for 20 sheets. I thought that was a, a pretty fair deal. So um, let's just, so basically if you can find a book cover similar to the size of your, um, you know, we these pages. Uh, we don't use photo albums as much anymore and you're going to find tons of these things for next to nothing in thrift stores and vintage stores and things like that. And um, they're very inexpensive garage sales. People are going to be unloading these because we store everything on our phones now and we don't do hard copy photos as much anymore. Um, the photo album and sheet section in this particular uh, store I was in was quite large actually and they were selling them for next to nothing and I didn't think about this idea until I got home I would have bought more so I, I probably will go back but uh, anyway so these you know these come in different sizes so check your sizes there's probably a standard size but I would say these are say 11 and a quarter by nine Okay, so 11 and a quarter by nine um, just happens to be the pack I grabbed. You might find others out there, but just find a book cover that will uh, accommodate that. We're going to do an easy ring bound journal. And the advantage to the ring bound journal uh, for this project is you can substitute bigger rings as your book gets fuller because you're going to be adding items to your book. It's going to get a little bulky and you can put giant rings. So you're never limited um, in space, which is the nice benefit of using the rings for the ring bound. And uh, the original, doo -doo -doo -doo, this particular ring I used, just want to give you the size. I'm guessing here it's like, they would probably call that a one inch ring. And you can buy two inch, one and a half, one and a quarter, two inch. You can buy any size you want. But I'm starting with one inch for um, this much thickness. But as I put in stuff, I will have to increase the uh, size of the ring. Okay, so let's go inside. And there's, um, I just did a few pages here because I wanted to give some examples of what you can do. And uh, so this is, I, oh, oh, I also wanted to use up some book pages because I have a ton of book guts because I've been gutting books like crazy to make journals and um, I want to use up these pages so I thought this would be a fun way to use up the pages too. So I turned the pages into, oh, let me show you, oh can't show you there, it's awful. I turned them into little pockets for uh, stuff and in this particular uh, one what I'm going to do is I'm going to store I find anything here. Like let's say I have cuts of uh, digital kits and or maybe I'll, I'll cut them in three or keep them as whole but uh, I can tuck them in here and that way I get a better view of what I've already fussy cut and I can pull things easily like I put my black and white flowers here, I put my uh, book plates here, I put some butterflies up here and uh, so you can tuck in lots of similar things in certain areas. I happen to do three pockets here. You could do as many pockets or as few pockets as you like. 
and um, I uh, chose to sew this to give it extra strength. Um, I tried gluing. I tried gluing with Fabrifix. I, I didn't. Um, it came off. So um, I feel that uh, this is a sewing project really to get the strength that you need. Maybe there's a glue out there that will work. Um, if you want to share glue ideas down below, like maybe E6000 or something like that, which will glue to the plastic on the sheets. I thought about peeling all the plastic off and just using the um, cardboard underneath, but that's laborious. And I just figured the plastic gave it extra strength as well. Plus the plastic makes it very easy to slide things in and out because it's, it's, uh, it's plastic. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to keep the plastic. Um, okay. So we are going to make a, we're going to make the cover and we're going to make, um, a few pages. And I just wanted to show you, uh, um, some examples and first, so prototype here has this page here and then I flipped it over and I did a giant corner tuck here also using a book page so I could put bigger pieces in. Maybe I haven't cut these all up yet. I don't exactly know how I'm going to use them but I just needed a quick place to tuck them and there it is. And that actually um, made it uh, easier because I was doing something on the back. Um, so that led me to this concept. And here I have two pockets. There's one here and there's one here. And I put some tall things here, some uh, checks uh, from a digi kit. And these are uh, owls and uh, woodland creatures, I think. And um, two pockets. But then on the back of this one, instead of gluing something right onto the back of this page, I decided to join it with another page. And I put three pockets on the second page. And then I sewed. Okay, let me show you. I sewed the bottom, the two bottoms together, and that gave me a big pocket in here. And then I can put whole sheets of uncut um, things. Like let's say, you know, you're doing digi kits or something like that, or you're buying digi kits and you need a nice place to organize and store them. Well, here's my uncut pages I can put in a section. Like let's say, I didn't organize it this well because I wasn't thinking ahead of time, but let's say I have all my pre-cut butterflies tucked into these pockets. Well, I could put the full sheets I haven't cut yet in this little slip, slip pocket that I made here. Um, so I can cut it at a later time. So just some thoughts and fun. And let me, I got lots of tips and tricks along here to make your life easier. I, want, I, I went ahead and made some so I could find out where the roadblocks were. And I attempted to handle the roadblocks. So let's, let's do it. Okay, pretty easy, pretty fun. And it's very sturdy. I think... Um, I was contemplating on using a file folder as the cover, which could totally work. I have to think on that a little bit more, but there's something about the, the structure of bookboard. It's so protective to your goodies on the inside. And if you store it on the shelf and you're pulling it in and out of the shelf a hundred times, you want something that is going to protect your items on the inside. Okay, let's make one. All right. So first thing I have to pick a book pay, uh, cover and I just grabbed a couple um, put contenders. And this is what I got. And I'm going to show you why I chose which one. All right. So here's a, I can't, this is kind of a cool cover. It's an old book piloting seamanship. And I want to check to see if it's going to fit my, um, my page. And this one, um, my pages are a little bit wider than my cover. Now I could go and laboriously cut all these down so they magically fit, but I actually like the width because that gives me more storage room. So I want to lean towards more storage room, just personal preference. You could make tiny ones too. That's fine. But uh, I'm going for more storage room. So what are my options with this? Let's say this is all I have. <clears throat> you could make an extension here. You could take another piece of um, cardboard or something else that you have and or another piece of bookboard um, and you could glue it on the edge and give yourself a little bit of an extension. I would use the fabric fix for that or I would sew it down here but the bookboard is hard to sew through so don't risk your your uh, machine on that. I would probably glue it um, or you could even put a, a, a thing of lace down here to extend it a little bit further. Your edges won't be protected as well as if you put something hard there. But the other easier opportunity um, alternative is get a book cover that's bigger. <laughs> and that's pretty much the easy fix for that. And I'd rather have my pages look a little small in there and a bigger book cover than the other way around. Okay. So let's just take the example. This is actually the wildflowers of the world that I have gutted. Yes, yes, I gutted it. I know, I know. Toes curling. Ah, how could you do that? I did it. 
Uh, this one fits perfectly and let me give you the dimensions of this book. You can't really see that, right? Um, but let me give you the dimensions so you will know. Then there's my Chatterpants Parrot. Um, he's such a good boy, but you know, sometimes he's happy and, the, and he just needs to tell the world. Okay, this one is about nine and a quarter wide and 12 and a quarter, maybe almost 12 and a half, but really like, no, yeah, 12 and a quarter tall. So um, just something to think about. It's easier if your pages fit completely inside. So first thing we wanna do, oh, this is gonna be a multi-part video. And um, so watch for the end. Um, and down below in the description box should be the links to the other parts. I don't know how many uh, until we're done here. Um, so it's more of a craft with me. Come on along for the ride. Let's see where this takes us. I'm gonna show you what I did make and maybe we'll have some time to make some other things too in addition. And um, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the spine. So I'm just gonna butt up pretty close to the edge of this. And uh, you wanna take your time while you're doing these things. Don't rush. Just enjoy the process, have fun, put some nice music on, uh, get a flameless candle going. I just bought some flameless candles and uh, you, if you take, uh, I always say this is our old friend sanding block that I have been, um, I have been um, educated that this is a sanding sponge. Let me see it's sponge. Okay, it might be a block. Maybe somebody advertises it as a block, but I've called it a block for years. But I think the old word for sanding block really meant when you had a piece of like two by four plywood and somebody stapled some sand, uh, sandpaper around it and that was the official sanding block. Anyway, anyway, our old friend, the sander. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and this is a little bit of a rough edge. A couple things you can do here. Come along here with our old friend, sanding block. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to call it anything else. Um, and this just takes off the rough edges. And you can smooth that down pretty good. Now this I'm making just for me, so I'm not making it so, you know, aesthetically perfect. Um, not that I do anything aesthetically perfectly. But uh, I'm taking rough edges off for my comfort so I don't cut myself on it. I don't want to get paper cut or anything like that. Now you can go ahead and cover this edge with material or washi tape or something if you want, but I don't, I don't mind the raw edge there. I'm okay with that. And uh, let's carry on to cutting this off. Twirl that around. Okay, and this makes good use of the book covers for these books we may have gutted for. Maybe this, this book had particularly pretty images on the inside. And, uh, but then I had the book cover hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. And here we go. Here's it. Putting this book cover to use. Always retract your craft knife. Yep. Because you could have a puppy around your ankles or you might be barefoot and the craft knife could end up in your foot. You don't want that, especially if you're sanding like a wild woman and things start jumping around on your desk. Yep. Holly agrees. Okay. It really does take off the rough edges as a sanding block should. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe I want to get a little closer there. I think I've sanded away <laughs> some of the book. Um, so you just come in here and you shave her down. You shave her down to where you want her to be and everything is good. There we go. All right, retract, getting rid of extra. No. There we go. All right, you know, it's kind of like woodworking. Gotta get in there and, and muscle it up a little bit. Okay, so there we are. We have our two uh, covers, front and back. And next, let's just pick one for the front. Well, this one's clean, so let's do that one. Um, this one had a few marks on it, so I'll put that one in the back. Um, I am gonna ink this up so you can see the edge a little bit better. This so you can see it. You don't have to do this. Oh, um, this is something I, well, we'll do decorating at the end. Never mind, Pam, stay focused. For, focused, stay focused. Okay, put it down where you want it to live. Okay, um, maybe you wanna put this close to the edge. All right, and square. I'm actually following the, uh, there's a white 
um, piece of paper glued onto the back of book cover. And then I'm going to take my handy dandy pencil and I'm going to make a mark in about the center of the circles here so I know where to punch with my, my punch. And then there's this one. Okay, now this one is going to be the front. Now the easiest way I figured out to do this was you put this so you can see, let me take you in closer. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the dots, see the dot here and the dot here. This is going to be your front cover. So you want to line this up. But first of all, you got to line it up so the dots are going to be in the same place. All right. So then let's put this here. Let's put this here first. Let's, this is how I did it. Okay. I met, I, I did this. Okay. So there's about, let me back it up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I see my three dots and then I put this down beside it. But then I got to make sure I'm the same amount over like from here to here. I could measure it. That would be easy. But I think I'm just going to line this up right here and use this as a template to tell me how far it needs to be over. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing an imaginary line from that to the center of this to the center of this, aligning this white edge up with the red um, cover behind it so I know exactly where to punch. Okay, so I did that. All right, not too bad so far, right? Okay. So next you can take, um, I find the easiest is to use one of these crocodiles. Uh, this is the crocodile original, which means it has a short mouth and or the crocodile big bite two which has the long mouth for longer things uh, this project you can use either one i'm just going to use the short one because i don't normally use this one i just want to show you if you if you uh, want to use it how to use it uh, so this uh let me just show it to you if you're looking for it oh it's by we are memory keepers oh i know you probably can't see that we are memory keepers oh that's upside down there you go okay not sponsored just like the product Okay, and backing up. So it has a big hole. Oh, probably can't see that. A big hole. I put a mark on that so I always know where the big hole is. The big hole is, um, I think it's 3 16 And the small hole, yeah, it says on here somewhere. I'll put the glasses on, Pam. You'll be able to see it. Yep, there it is. 3 16 right there. Okay, and then there's a small hole. And that one is, what? Well, not a centimeter. That one is, uh, oh, there it is, one eighth inch. Okay. So we are going to use the 3 16 um, hole punching. So let's get in there and do that. Okay, here we go. We're punching. Yeah, you can see better if I do it close right now. One, not too hard. I'm just got to get that, that little guy out. Oh, there. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So I can see where the next hole is to punch. Let me get the other thingy. Sometimes it's handy to have one of these little gizmos. You know, these little guys? Yeah, for embossing and stuff. Yeah, you just. There you go. That guy out of there. Oh, this tool is so fabulous. Okay. Boop, there we go. He's out. All right, got him out. Sometimes they pop right out, sometimes they don't. So it is what it is. Okay. And okay. Yep, not popping out. One of those days. <laughs> All right, oh, let me back up a little bit so you can see a little better. Sorry, it was a little close there. All right, here we go. I'll be more mindful. More mindful going forward. Um, I'll back you out even more. Okay, I hear you. Back out more for more. I hear you. All right, just doing the last one here on the front cover. And there. Okay, got that. No, I don't I think I did that one further over. I don't think it's going to make that much difference because it's a, a ring bound and you have a little wiggle room with ring bounds. So don't sweat about it if it didn't come out in the exact spot. All right, so let's go ahead and do this here. One. Maybe I can just kind of guess. Oh, that's probably bad news, huh? All right, let's do it. Two, did I get it? Oh, sort of. See, it was a little off. Really should poke them out. But two, just, yeah. One yeah. out. <laughs> oh, you're out. Okay. No fussing. He's out. He's out. He was willing. Okay. Hi. 
Uh, that's my boy. My Holly boy. He's like, hey, I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing things that you don't want me to be doing. I know. I know, boy. I know. <laughs> All right. We're good. We're good. We're good. He's actually my little man. Yeah. He's at, uh, what, 12 or 13 now? Um, he's living the good life. Yeah. He's got it good around here. Okay. We have our uh, covers. And maybe I just want to do a little trimaroo here. And maybe you like the fray. Um, I just want to. I don't want to be frayed at the moment. Okay, so this is my back cover. This is my front cover. And the holes, if I did everything right, should be pretty darn close. And they are, they are well, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I can see air, air and light through all of them. So that's a good sign. Uh, there's hope for me. Um, okay, so we got that. And uh, now what do we want to do with it? We want to build the insides. And we're going to start with our first page. So we're going to grab our first page. We don't need the cover right now. Um, oh, I will tell you, I did attempt to put eyelets here. It can be done. I needed eyelets with longer shanks. I did. N I only had regular eyelets that go through paper, so this was too thick. So I really need something with a longer shank or possibly a grommet to squeeze to go on there. But they're not necessary. I want you to know that you don't have to have those. In a way, you can get like a little bit of a look or an appeal. Um, on there that isn't a I'm looking for my dauber where'd you go um is it okay it's right here uh without having to squash anything in there is just you grab a makeup sponge one of these egg things and uh you do this and this will give you that like little emphasis that something happened there you can put you can glue little uh, reinforcements and stuff too but i just didn't want anything that was going to pop off and uh, I just wanted to be easy, functional, and um, no muss, no fuss. So that's what I ended up doing, just putting little dots like that. It gives you that look of a reinforcement without having to glue a reinforcement. And uh, it's very easy. So I'll just put those on there. You can get these makeup sponges probably at the, at the dollar stores now. Um, I think I originally bought mine in TJ Maxx or something like that, but you can buy them online and everything. I think I'm running out of ink. Or maybe it's the, the book, co the cover is a little bit of, oh no, there we go. I just was running out of ink. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So there we go. We have some little emphases, emphases. <laughs> All right. Now we're going on to making the first one. And let me just give you a quick look back on what the first one looked like again. Where'd I put prototype? Oh, there it is. It's not like you could miss this guy backing up so everybody can see. Hi. Okay, so the first one was three pockets. And then on the back is a giant, oh, sorry, is a giant corner tuck to hold bigger items. So smaller items, pre-cut digis little embellishments, other fussy cut things, little tickets, um, all sorts of fun things that you find that are um, can be tucked into little pockets. So we're going to make that page. All right. So I'm grabbing my book, my gutted book, which is where, who organized this desk? Oh, good grief. Okay. Now this particular book with these pages, this book is five by seven and a half. So seven and a half inch tall by five. And this one just seems to perfectly fit, but your book pages could be wider and you can cut them down. doesn't matter. So I'm going to cut out, um, I'm going to tear out three. Those background birds are my love birds, Happy and Leonardo. And uh, apparently they're very happy at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to have three and these actually fit perfectly. Another little tip here. Good to know is, uh, okay. So you're going to fold them in what I call the tube formation. Okay, now, okay, so that basically, you're just bringing in one side somewhere in the middle, and this one's going to cover that edge. Okay, now you can glue it here, you can um, uh, glue stick it, you could sew it, um, as long as it's free, it's still down, that's fine. I mean, uh, as long as it's uh, not attached to your page yet, it's easy to use a glue stick or something. What I recommend, the tip truly is, um, when you're going to be adhering these to your pages, make sure that the down, 
See that? The down flap as opposed to, let me show you. Hang on. I'll do these the same way. Okay. Now the, okay, so here's an up flap, and that's a down flap. Okay, so this one is an up flap. You don't want that. So when it's turned over, things can get stuck in your up flap, and you don't want that. You want everything to translate smoothly back there. So it's better, I'll just show you the back. That's what it looks like. You don't want things to get stuck there. You want to rotate it so you have a down flap. So as you tuck things, it's not going to catch on anything. Yeah, that's the ticket. Okay, so um, you can glue these as I'm doing, but you can also sew them. So I will also sew them. Um, and the reason why I'm sewing them um, is because book page can sometimes be a little bit fragile and I want to give it a little more strength. And you can also double up on book pages if your book pages are too thin, triple up, quadruple up, whatever you need to to get the thickness that you feel is what you're looking for. Okay, so I've got my downward trajectory. So that means these, let me ink those so I know. Um, is that that? No. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, and I'm using walnut stain today because it, it happens to be right here. And uh, let me do the other third one. Okay, and you may want to take account of what direction your words are. Maybe you want to use wider pages where all your words are face up. I, I'm not really worried about the direction of the words. It's, like I said, it's more utilitarian, but I think the book pages make it kind of cute. Um, okay, so I'm going to put you here. And this is number three. A little glue in here. The glue's not truly necessary because if you're going to sew it, you don't really need the, even need the glue. Uh, I'm just doing it so just to show you an option. But to get the true strength, the sewing comes in very handy. Okay. So now what I've chosen to do with these is ink up the top edge to give it a little bit of distinction so I can see where it is. Plus it also makes it easier for you guys to see where the pocket is on camera. And here we go. And uh, this is honestly a very simple project. And um, as yet again, I'm making it look more elaborate and complicated than this. It's pretty easy. And um, I think anybody can do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to arrange these here. I don't mind if they're not exactly the same size. doesn't matter to me. You can measure them so they are. But these are going to fit perfectly. So what I've decided to do is take... Um, a little bit of, uh, you could use a glue stick, you could use Fabrifix, doesn't matter. I'm just taking a little bit of glue to put it in place so it will stay there while I'm trying to sew it. So I'm going to put this guy close to the bottom because I want as much tuckage room here as I can, leaving a little space. Little space, but close to the bottom. Okay, next guy is going to be somewhere in the middle. And I will give you one little tip. It's it's to your advantage to line it up the bottom, not with the hole, because then you can zip your sewing machine right across and it's pretty fast. You don't have to stop. So I'm going to put it there. And I would like to line these along the same edge. And you can almost follow, there's like little gl like faux glue dots along here you can use as your line. Now, I, my big dream was this would work and it wouldn't peel off with just the Fabrifix, but unfortunately the plastic and the Fabrifix don't adhere that well together and everything pops off. And if you're gonna load, the, uh, you're gonna load these and um, do stuff with them, you want them strong so that they're functional for you. Now, I'm, I, I didn't mean to glue the side. That was uh, because I did that originally and it didn't work. So that's my didn't work move. Remember, leave yourself a little bit here so that whatever you tuck here, you can actually see. All right, because you don't want to put it right at the top or it's going to be sticking above your book. Okay, so you want to leave a little room there. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing you around and we're going to sew. Hang on. Okay, I'm coming over. Here I come. See, I'm coming. This is my top because I can tell because I've inked the tops. These are my bottoms. Can you see that? I don't know. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to take you over here and we're going to sew. I'm going to sew a zigzag stitch along the bottom of all these, but I'm actually going to start from the edge and run right off the edges because I don't want to be, I don't want to be fussing. Okay. And I'm going to widen my zigzag stitch a little bit. So the original setting is 1.4 and I'm going to hit it. Oh, no, I did hit the wrong button. I'm going to hit it up to like 1.8 to make it wider. I'm going to pull my sewing foot back down. because My puppy's not here to eat it. And we're off. Now, do, maybe do a couple stitches here and go back 
Um, I don't normally do this on paper, but this is a little thicker and I think it's good to anchor it. And then you just go. And you go. And you go. And I go right off the edge. You don't have to, just a uh, artist choice. I'm not gonna cut it. Um, and now I'm gonna come over here and do the bottom of this one. Okay, and we're going. And we're going. And we're going. And we're zigzagging. And you could do straight stitch too, but I just happen to be zigzagging because I just, I don't know, I thought it might look cool. Okay, I'm off the edge, pulling, and then I'm gonna come around whoop, and do this one. I can curl that up in there. You can cut these off. You don't have to keep them attached. I just, I just do. And we're going, and we're going, and we're going, and we're almost done where we have adhered all the bottoms. Gotta have your bottoms adhered in life or life can get wacky. <laughs> all right. Okay. There we go. Okay. Can you see? Can you see? Okay. It's kind of close. All right. Here's one two, three. You could totally leave them as that, but I do want to secure the edges so it's a true pocket so I'm not chasing stuff around my craft room or a floor for the rest of my life. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do here, okay, is I'm just going to sew a straight stitch down here and that's going to catch all these three sides. And then I'm going to sew, sew a straight, whoop, sew a straight stitch up here and that's going to catch those three sides. So I'm going to change my setting. No big deal. Number one, maybe make it a little why, uh, like space between stitches greater. Um, and we go. And we go. And this goes pretty fast because it's a straight stitch. Woohoo! Okay, maybe back. I, I should have did that at the top. I didn't do that, the back stitch, but um, I would recommend it. Okay, I guess I'm cutting that. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, couple stitches in. Oh, did I? Did I? Yep, I lost it. Hang on, I gotta rethread my needle. Okay, I'm gonna do this on camera because in case some of you need to see that, back here, under here, they're all a little different, but this is basically the deal. Like that, down below, hooking onto that thingy, grabbing around that a little gizma bob. And once you figure that out, that's a YouTube video that you should look up for your own um, model of, of sewing machine if you're, if you're like venturing into sewing with paper now, which really opens up your world and gives you lots of possibilities. There. Okay, enough yakking. Get back and do that again. Okay. And backstitch a little bit. And then we go to town. Almost done. Almost done. Little backstitch. Okay. Okay, that's good. Probably could have done it closer to the edge. But we are done. Oh, you can't see anything. Let me bring you back over here. Hold on, everybody. Okay, we're probably getting ready to flip over to the second part at some time around 32, 33, 34, often. Um, it'll switch over, so just be prepared for that. So what I essentially have are three pockets, okay? And that means that I can come in here and I can tuck stuff, maybe pre-cut digis, uh, maybe uh, tickets, maybe I wanna put tickets here, gathering all my little tickets. Maybe I've, I've made some pre-made little embellishments, putting all my tickets together here. Very handy, more digis down here, more tickets. Um, so like, as you see, you could just organize them at will. Um, lots of fun, lots of fun to be had there. Oh, that's cute. All right, so now on the back of this, let me just show you prototype again. On the back is a corner tuck. Now the reason I'm not doing three more pockets on the back is because I would have to sew it again through and that means that's going to come through here somewhere and I have no idea exactly where that is. It could be done with excessive measuring but eh, eh. Okay, go ahead and do that if you want to do that. Um, I'm going to take the cheater way out and I thought how can I make this a usable page? I don't lose the space, but I still make it um, utilitarian, functional, and uh, having a, a good purpose and using up my, my stuff. So I grabbed a couple book pages yet again. Okay. And then um, I cut this into a triangle. Um, okay, let me do that, hang on. I mean, did I fold it down? Maybe I did, I don't remember if I doubled it up or not. Eh, I don't remember. Well, we'll just go ahead and do it. All right, so I'm doing that and then I'll just stay here. I won't, I won't go over to my guillotine. I'll, I'll stay right with you guys. Not leaving, not leaving. Okay. 
I didn't really, I could have used my, my tearing ruler for that. Okay, so I have that. Maybe I'm gonna ink this edge. Okay. And, and what I actually did was originally, I went back to the sewing machine and I zigzagged around here. Hang on. Okay, so I did the zigzag stitch and I zigzagged around this to give it a little bit more strength. That's why I did that. I wanted to create a nice, beefy, juicy tuck pocket because it would be holding bigger items. So it needed to be a little stronger. So that was my thinking at the time. Oh, one more. Okay, maybe three more. Okay. And we're going around the mountain. It's a triangular mountain. Okay, and this is what I ended up doing in the very long run of it all. Great way to use up these book pages if you have them. And uh, using the little cutaroo. Cut. All right, and we're going back. Don't get sick. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so now I have this. How nice is that? Oh, great, I, I did it. Um, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, the words are never going in the right direction. Um, so I have this and I thought, let me glue it down and maybe that will work, but the glue still didn't hold that well. So I decided what I'm gonna do is I was going to sew it in place. I'm just gonna do a quick bit of glue just to keep it in one position while I sew. And I'm just gonna sew it with a straight stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that on there where I want it giving myself just a little bit away from the edge. So as your book pages open and close, they don't catch on each other on the edges. So there's nothing, um, but it's inside the white page. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a straight stitch and I can zoom down here and zoom across, or you can just zoom from here to here. So let's go do that. Okay. Oh, I forgot to hit pause. Okay. I, apparently I'm still here. I wanted to, I, I was sewing. Um, I want to show you a little uh, trick, nothing fancy, but when you're sewing multiple things, instead of coming to the end, stopping, lifting the foot up, cutting all that stuff, just, just kind of keep going, leave a little space. But if you're going to do another one of similar, you're using the same zigzag stitch or something, just do this. Yeah keep going saves you one little step now you don't have the back and forth you could do a back and forth here there's a back and forth okay and now you come and you do that and then you just snip these apart okay back over here hang on um okay we're back i have this okay let me cut this apart all right Doop. okay and let's just go ahead and we'll glue it down to where we want it to live Okay, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely covered. I just want a benchmark. Probably should ink it up first. It's easier to ink it up when before you glue it down or sew it in. Okay, there we go. You could you could do it all the way around too if you wanted. Now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and remember not to do it right at the hole because I want to sew off the hole. Meaning, I'm, if I'm gonna come this way, I want to be able to zoom across. If I don't want to engage this. <coughs> Okay, inking, ink, dink. Okay, thread loss. Boop. Okay, glue. All right. Somebody mentioned, uh, and not to get the glue ooze here, if you put the petroleum jelly here, so this was easier to open and close. There's some other kind of silicone salve. I want to say that you can put there that apparently it works better. So if you can, I can't remember the name of it, sorry. Um, but there is something else out there that makes life easier in that department if you're looking for that little tip. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to do zigzag stitch all the way across, 
straight stitches down here. I'll be right back. Okay, apparently I zigzag stitched everywhere because I forgot to change the stitch, but it doesn't matter because it all works because I have to admit I was thinking about what am I gonna have for breakfast today? Gee, that would be nice. This would be nice, that would be nice. And next thing you know, it, this is done as is, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so then you can come along and you can stick things in here till the cows come home. You know, I mean, there's no limits. You can just have lots of fun. You can put things sideways. You can put them all upright, doesn't matter. You are not limited, which is kind of fun, but you can put bigger things in here too. Um, you can put bigger things in the other one too. It's okay. Um, so yeah, lots of fun. Okay. So now let's do, let's take this stuff out. The other side. Now the other side had three. So let me just go ahead and do that. You already saw that. So I will just poof through the magic of television. Have that done. Okay. I'm back. Okay. So I have this page. Notice the rings are on this side. So this is the back of my conjoined page. Yep, we're all chatter pants right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is going to take this first page we made with the two and I'm going to sew it together with the three and make the pocket. And all I'm going to do, line them up and I'm going to sew along the bottom. So come on with me, I'll show you. Okay, here I am, got my two pages and I am uh, just gonna sew along the bottom, sewing the two pages together. So it is a good idea, cause this will be a, a stress bearing load here. Go ahead and I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. You can use a straight stitch. I'm gonna use a, yeah, I'm gonna use a zigzag. That's what I used. I don't think it matters, but you do wanna lock both edges. So you want, that means you wanna do a couple of stitches and then go back. Cause you don't want this coming apart. Yeah, and now you go to town. Yay! I'm not going for aesthetics here. I am just going for anchorage. We are anchoring and I'm sewing right off the edge. Woohoo! There we go. Oh man, backing it up a bit, doing my anchor. Okay, and I'm out. And that was pretty much that. Okay, back over to the table. Come on back. Hang on. Okay, so here we are. We have our formed pocket. Now when it's in the journal, it's going to be like this because the rings are holding it closed here. So I don't need to sew this side. You could, but um, I don't, I don't really see any major need to. You can cut off all these strings too. If that makes you happy, go for it. Um, but let's go ahead and construct our journal because we're pretty much coming down the home stretch here. We're probably in video and ending. Oh, we might be in. Yeah, we're still in video number two, I think part two. Okay. So front back, pull this baby out. We're all decorated. And then we have, where's our other page? We so painstakingly made. Where are you, other page? Hello, other page. Here you are. This is the one with um, the three and then the corner tuck. So we'll use that as our first page. This will be our second page. Okay, and we can keep going because we have more pages. And what I think I'll do is I'll just grab the bulk of the, the leftover of these guys and put them in here so I have them all in one place. All right, here we go. I think there's 20 pages total to play with in this pack. Um, let's grab our rings. Holy mo- oh no, let's do a little decorating now. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I did like, uh, how did I do it on the thing? Oh, I, um, I did this first because this is paper, this part, and not the shiny, but the paper part. You can come and inkarama that just to, I don't know, if you want to do that, that's kind of fun. And then if you want to, add even more, you can do the fake um, reinforcements like that to give yourself a little page pizzazz. Totally up to you. And uh, just to give you some ideas of how you can decorate them. And uh, of course, the world is your oyster. We know that for sure. And um, let's say we want to put maybe a black and white. I, you can put whatever you want. You could put a book plate here. You could put a picture. I'm just going to put a picture to kind of get me started. It gives me a little motivation and excitement. If you could turn it into a pocket, you could do whatever you like, but I'm just going to keep it clean because I want my bulk to be focused in my book and not on my covers. That's the only reason. Um, and I'm just going to glue it. Good old Fabrifix, paper to paper, paper to fabric, fabric to fabric, uh, clear silicone glue. All right. I'm just going to put that over here for Aesthetics. Okay, there's a little aesthetics going on here, and there it is. Hope I put it on straight. All right, so let us grab three rings. Where'd they go? Here they are. Three rings. These are the one inches. Okay. And like I said, you probably want to get some different sizes because you may find your book grows with time. 
Okay. These are all, at luck, stuff like this is all linked in my Amazon store. If you're looking for any of the items that I'm using here, I'm pretty sure everything is there. Um, so you may find that. Okay. So we're going to go from the bottom. Okay. Put the cover on. Get these guys in there. All right. Pull it through enough and get the outer cover on. Okay. Then we're going to do that. I'm trying, I would recommend, yeah, I practically actually close that. that there, there, you don't have to worry anymore. Okay, let's do the bottom one. Let's see if that goes easy. Oh, we can't see a thing, I'm sure. Sorry. Let me move that here. Okay, going through the bottom hole. Now grabbing these guys. That's a pretty big hole, not too hard to get. And then aiming for the little hole up front. Okay, squinching it through turning it so the closure is on top so it's easier. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So that was closed. And then we just do the middle one. Let's hope everything lines up. Crossing fingers. Oh my gosh. I hope it works. Hope it works. Woo! Yeah, we're through. Oh, life's looking good. Life's looking really good right about now. Okay. So there we go. So let me introduce you to our ephemera holder, our DigiKit fussy cut holder and whole page holder. Um, as you see, we have, no, you can't see. We have lots of room to put stuff. Oh, let me keep you on the desk. Don't need to see my belly. <laughs> All right. Three pockets here. The tuck. Okay. Double pockets here and here. And triple pockets. But this has the secret uh, tuckaroo. And uh, let's see if we got anything to tuck in here. Grab something, Pam. Okay. Here's some papers. And let's just say we want to put some papers here. There, I can put that there. There, look at that, all ready to go. And it grows as you grow. So I hope you liked that. I hope you had fun.